good morning, everyone. Happy Easter 2020. Today, we're going to begin our little service with a wonderful song written by Mr. <laughs> Bill Gaither. God sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. Oh, He came to love. He'll and forgive. Yes, He lived and He died. By my pardon and an empty grave is there to prove my Savior still lives because he lives. I can face tomorrow. And because he lives, all my fear is gone. Because I know, yes, I know that he holds my future. Life is worth the living just because he lives, because he lives. Why can face tomorrow? Because he lives. All fear is gone Because I know Yes, I know He holds my future And my life is worth The living just Because He lives That's a wonderful truth for us this morning. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow and we can face today. I'm going to invite you, if you would, to get out your scripture text. Turn into the book of John from the New Testament, the 20th chapter. We will be reading from the first nine verses. John chapter 20, beginning with the first verse. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, while it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came unto the sepulchre. So they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulchre. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet he went not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulchre seeing those linen clothes lie. 
and the napkin that was placed about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place all by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which first came to the sepulcher, and he saw, and he believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. These are the words of the Lord this morning, this Easter morning. Hallelujah. Our message today for you is called, He Still Moves Stones, or God is Still in the Rock Moving Business. This morning, as we start in our scripture text, we see right from the beginning, right from the very first verse, that the stone, the rock, in front of the tomb where Jesus was laid, is gone. It's been moved. Mary and the other disciples thought someone else had moved that stone and stolen the body, possibly moving it somewhere else. Today, we know better. We know that it was God who had moved it. Now, friends, on this Easter morning and this occasion, we get very excited, as we should, about that rock being moved on Easter Day. But as we just reflect for just a moment about the last couple of days of Jesus' life, they've been kind of discouraging, haven't they? We want that, and they certainly wanted that to be over. The beatings, the torturing, the fake trials, the mockery, and a cruel death on the cross. As I so often say, these things do not make you want to sit down and eat ice cream cones all day long. No, back then, on that day, the friends of Jesus were discouraged. My friends, as you are friends of Jesus, do you get discouraged? Especially, do you ever get discouraged when you think about the things of God and what is going on around us, all of us in the world today? The condition of the world, the state of affairs, the way people act and react. We have some things that face us each and every day, especially now. We have such corruption, it seems, in our government. We're faced with this pandemic we call the coronavirus. We have wars. We have famines. We have pestilences. We have earthquakes. Some bad stuff is going on, isn't it? Those things will bring us down. How can they not help but do so. My friends, I ask you, are you discouraged today? Have you been discouraged in the past few days and weeks with all that is going on, all that looms all around us? Now, we don't want to stay there very long, but I will speak the truth. I can be there. And that's not good, is it? I mean, if the preacher is discouraged, if the preacher gets down, if the preacher isn't running down the aisles, turning backflips like John Bellucci and John Bel in the Blues Brothers movie, how can anyone else in the congregation be on top of the world? That's a good question. And certainly this person that's been given the responsibility of leading the congregation on a spiritual journey, journey he needs to do that. He needs to be on top of the world. Who wants to go on a journey with Eeyore? You remember him, don't you? How about this? How about if I share like this? Okay, you guys. We know God is good. Oh, bother. I think I need a nap. Oh boy, that, that wouldn't go over very good, would it? <laughs> no, indeed. And in truth, we, me, you, when we examine this book, we should figuratively be doing backflips because 
we already know Jesus wins. Death has not beaten him. Those Jewish leaders thought they had gotten rid of him. The Romans thought they had put this man causing so much of a stir. They thought they had put him to death. Satan is in hell thinking. Ha ha! Ah, that fool, that stooge is dead. But yet, he's not. He wasn't, was he? No, not after this resurrection morning. Hmm. Wow. Great news for us. My friends, I want to tell you, the Bible is very cool, if you let it be, if you approach it that way. And it ties so many things together. And I want to tell you something that it ties together. Maybe you hadn't thought about it before. But you remember that guy back in the Old Testament. You know, this preacher likes to preach from the Old Testament. It was that guy named Jonah who got swallowed by the great big whale. Remember how long he was swallowed up for? Three days. I love to preach about him. But when he, he was basically dead to the world. <laughs> I mean, when you're inside of the belly of a whale, you're not probably going to come back out, are you? But he did after three days, and he came back running to share God's word with all who would hear. That was a foretaste of what exactly Jesus would do. Hallelujah. Oh, my. I could just get up and do some backflips right now. Hold me down. My friends, with all the excitement, with almost everything in life, as excited as we are, there's an obstacle gently in our way. And we don't want to be negative. We don't want to be in the ditch. We don't want to be like Eeyore, my friends. But we do face some realities that can beat us down into a place like we used to say when I was a kid, we're so low it would take a 747 to get you off of a piece of paper. My friends, as super as Easter is, can you imagine in your wildest dreams what those people, those friends of Jesus experienced 2,000 years ago on that Easter morn. Because for three years of their life, for every moment of the day, all of their hopes, all of their dreams had been placed in one project, in one man's teaching and preaching. And now, he was dead. To make it even worse, think on it now. Jesus didn't just have a heart attack or some crazy road chariot running down the road, killed him by accident. No, he was convicted. Never mind how fake the trial was. He had been convicted, condemned, beaten, spit upon, mocked, crucified, and pierced right through his heart. How would you feel as a friend of Jesus? Low, low, low. Put yourself right there in their place this morning. This was not only the man that you believed in and that you followed, but he was your best friend. And now he's dead in shame. When our friends, when our family members die, we grieve. We're sad, but friends, this had to be a hundred times worse. Now, we know that Jesus was not dead because of the Bible and the witness of others and the historical documents that we had. But how about that day 2,000 years ago? What did they need? What were they experiencing? As they walked along, they were like Eeyore, walking with their heads hanging low, crying, moaning, groaning, hearts as heavy as possibly they could be. And then, what in the world did they say? The stone, the rock, moved away. Don't get excited too much yet, because for them, it had gotten worse. We thought it was bad. But now as we look, as we're friends of Jesus, we see that stone rolled away. We see even more injustice. 
we see to make him a mockery, to have taken him away and moved him somewhere else. Friends, down through human history, we've always thought it was a despicable act to desecrate the grave. And when that group came to Jesus' tomb, that's exactly what they thought they were seeing. I don't think you could have written a worse scenario for these people if you dreamed about it for a hundred years. And we know what happened because of the scripture. God moved the stone. God moved that rock. Why? Did God let Jesus out? No. That's utterly ridiculous. My friends, anytime Jesus wanted to, he walked right through walls. He could disappear and reappear in thin air. He had done that before. And if he is alive, he could just come out right through the stone. So why did God move that stone? So they, so we could see. Jesus was not there. He is risen. He is not dead. He is not beaten. He is conquered. Hallelujah. Those friends of Jesus that day needed a miracle. They were down so low. I'm not even sure what would have happened if they saw Jesus without the stone being gone. No, that stone being in the way stood in the way of their faith. When all seemed lost, when all hope seemed gone, God moved the stone. Could they have moved the stone even, even if they had wanted to? The answer, my friends, is no. They needed God to do it. And you know what? He did. Today, my friends, do we, do we need a stone moved? Do we need some rocks taken out of the way? Have things beaten us down and made us feel low? For an awful lot of people, the answer is yes. There's a lot that goes on that will make you feel low. Maybe it's hard to know the depth of sadness that they were in. But we, just like them, face some things in our life that we did not choose. They didn't choose to have their friend die. And there are many times we don't have a choice in the things that bring us down low. Friends, God is still in the miraculous. He is still in the wonder-working business. But you know what we need this morning? We need to see it. We need to see him at work today. We need to get to the place where we can see past the problem. They had a rock in the way. Jesus was risen, but they didn't know it until that rock was moved away. There's some rocks that are in our way. That similar problem they had 2,000 years ago. There's a rock. There's a stone in our way. God's still working. God is doing, but we don't often seem to be able to see through it. And we are feeling pretty low. We want to get to that place where we're doing backflips, where we're excited about things. And the truth is, sometimes we get there. We can't live there. No one can live on top of the mountain forever all day long. But we certainly also don't want to be in the pit of despair all of our either, do we? No. So we ask the question, how can we have a victory? How today can we get to that mountaintop? How can we have a great experience? How can we have a great day, a great week, and a great life? How can we have that victory? Well, my friends, Satan is blinding us. Satan is putting stones into your path this morning so that you cannot see. You cannot see the glory of God. But I've got some great news for you this morning because you are listening. If you did not care to 
to hear anything from God, you wouldn't be doing that. You would never have gotten this far. So praise God that you are listening this morning. God wants to move some stones in your life. He wants you to be able to see his glory, his wonder working miraculous power in this world. But he does want you to ask. Simply that. He does want us to look at him. He wants us to see these things. Those friends of Jesus, they knew where the tomb was. They knew where that obstacle in the rock was. And that day they came to the place, not knowing exactly what they would see. Today, my friends, you've turned on this channel. You've came into this place where you've listened to this message. Maybe you didn't even know what you would hear today, what you would find. Could this simple country preacher just ask a small request of you? It's a small request, but yet each of you must do it for yourself. You must do it. Could you simply ask God right now? Say to God, God, I've got some stones in my life. I've got some things that are blocking my view from seeing your glory. And I'm a little discouraged even on this Easter morning with all that's going on. I can't see much that's in life that's very good right now. I can't see much glory. I can't see the miraculous. I can't see the greatness that I know that I really should. God, can you move those stones? Can you roll them out of the way so that I can see? I want my faith to grow stronger. God, would you move those stones so that I can see? John and Peter needed that. And they saw God face to face for three years. So certainly 2,000 years later, my friends, we need that. In 2020. Do you think that you could do that this morning? Not for me, but for yourself, for your own spiritual journey. That's a prayer, my friends, that God is waiting to answer. He would like you to come to him and ask. Move the stones. Could you? Would you? Please don't delay. What's on the other side of the rock that blocks you? You indeed want to see it. You want to see God's glory. Let him help you today. Let's have a word of prayer in closing. Father, indeed, we ask that you help this poor country preacher to have the stones removed that he can see your glory and that others will follow along. Maybe they'll be doing a backflip when I see them again, and you see them from heaven. God, we ask it. We ask that you help us, that you bless us, that you keep us safe, that you keep us in your mercy and your grace, and that you deliver us from all evil. For we pray these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ today. Amen and amen. Be blessed, my friends, this Easter. Rejoice. God is still in the rock-moving business.